Alright, let's continue with some of these comments. I'm just laughing because that last video I made was 58 minutes. That's ridiculous. I wanted to make a three minute video. It ended up being 58 minutes. Okay, so let's go continue here. Every Christian church is teaching the response to the everlasting gospel wrongly. The everlasting gospel is a phrase used one time only in God's word. So let's find everlasting. Let's do it this way. Make it simple. Revelation 14, verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. So it's true that it's only, that phrase is only used the one time. The definition of the everlasting gospel is to, one, fear God, two, give glory to Him, and three, worship God alone. Ah. Uh, Yeah, the, the gospel means good news. The everlasting good news is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And of course, all glory goes to God. And we should worship one God. There's only one God. Um, but the everlasting gospel is faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Everlasting life. The good news is everlasting life. To fear God, read from an authorized King James, every word of the first four chapters of the book of Romans, then give glory to God alone, declare in your heart, mind, and with your lips the righteousness of God. Read every word from Romans chapter 1 verse 4 through 25 I think is what that's supposed to be or is it Romans 1 verse 1 to Romans 4 verse 25 and then declare the righteousness of God that allows God to be just and justified to impute his righteousness on you a believer in the right Jesus in the right word of God. Romans 3 verses 24 through 26 is confirmation. Romans 3 being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God has set forth to be the appropriation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God to declare I say at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believes in Jesus. After you do read those verses and declare the righteousness of God, continue your reading of Romans at chapter 5 as a now fully justified person. Romans 5 verse 1, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom also ye have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Alright, so that, that I absolutely agree, no question about it. The righteousness of God is the righteousness by faith, faith in the one who justifies us, and that is Jesus Christ. So, uh, That's a good comment there. I appreciate that. All right, so uh, I think uh, like Romans 11 is a great chapter, all to itself. 
by faith, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Alright, so, okay. this, uh, the righteousness by faith, it, it, it's always been. That's never changed. Righteousness has never been by any other way. All right, so good job there out of um, the real ST. Right, Richie. Let's see. I was watching a YouTube channel called Barely. I say he states, I think. Did I already respond to this? Oh, yeah. I hope I did. I think I did. And I didn't respond to this one right here. Uh, what's a predator? Predatorist? Uh, I like the first movie. Seriously, it states this generation will pass, which means 70 AD. You know, to me, that's like, um, you know, the ancient alien people. They, they, they see like an uh, ancient artifact. And they, well, this must be from Mars. This little little green man from Mars must have done this, because I don't know, must be aliens. So, same thing with the preterist. They don't understand something, so it must be 70 AD. Right? And it said there's 70 AD has no relevance to Scripture at all. None whatsoever. It saw what John wrote in Revelation. Now there is a plausible theory. There were three questions in one there in Matthew. Yeah, there were three uh, questions in Matthew 24. But they were all, it was, it's all related one to the other. Right, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? When shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Right, so they're all three related. So Jesus, he lays it all out plainly. This is as clear and plain as you're going to get anywhere in Scripture and anywhere in the Bible. Nobody explains it better than Jesus in his own words. All right. What shall be the sign? When shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and about the end of the world? It's all talking about the same thing. So, Roderick, when it talks about the generation, let's see, do you, you brought that up before. The generation is from the time of Jesus to the time of his return. There can be no other possible explanation or definition of what that particular word generations means that's the only context that it could possibly be is from the time of Jesus to the time of his return that generation one or two for soon to come and third meaning the end like way in the future that's why they were told to flee Judea or whatever when they see the signs. Jerusalem was destroyed soon after his death. The problem is Jerusalem still exists today. That wall has never come down or that that uh, the temple building that's still there. Jerusalem's still there. The temple building's through. They rebuilt the wall. There's no nobody doubts that but Jesus says not one stone shall be left upon another. Not one stone let's see there shall not be left here one stone upon another that has not happened it didn't happen in 70 AD it hasn't happened yet it's gonna happen at the end of the world it's gonna be flattened totally hey if you don't believe me just watch and see it's gonna happen and it's going to happen when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and the sun is darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Man, it's coming to an end. Alright, so. Uh, 
me this the whole 70 AD thing is just absolute nonsense. I don't agree with none of it. What's none nothing at all. Whether you want to talk about Matthew 24, the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel, it 70 AD applies to none of it. It's a just a confusing doctrine, it has no value at all. That's my uh, thoughts on that. Take 70 AD, throw it in the garbage can, and forget about it. it has a, there's no use for it. No useful value at all. Alright, so that's it. Let's make this one short. Hold on a sec. Let me do one thing. I probably shouldn't do this because this is going to turn into a two hour video. Let's just see. I thought I saw a red. There we go. There he is. Re Reality Talk with Carter. 16 hours ago and 14. I just did an hour talking about this guy. The Holy Spirit can't. Let's see what he says. Well, you think I'm long winded. This guy. He's got me beat. The Holy Spirit came to convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment, not your message. You are right. No way for us to stop sinning. <laughs> Jesus paid it all. But if you practice sin on purpose, okay, so it's okay to accidentally, oops, I sinned. I accidentally cheated on my wife. Didn't mean to do that. Whoopsie. Now you're not saved because you did it on purpose. If you were to accidentally do it, you'd still be saved, but because you did it on purpose, you're not saved. Now, there is no more sacrifice for that sin, so you're lost forever. So if you don't understand Hebrews 10 at all, that's what you're left to believe. Oops, you sinned. Now the question is, did you do that on purpose, or was that just an accident? Well, there was a banana peel there, Judge, and I slipped, and then I accidentally cheated on my wife. It's wrong to cheat on your wife. It's terrible. It's as bad as any sin you could ever commit. But does that mean you're going to lose your salvation? God's going to stop loving you? Think about your child. What is the worst possible sin your child could commit? And let's say he does that. You gonna is he gonna stop being your child? Are you gonna stop loving him because he made a big mistake and he did it on purpose? Let's say you're you tell your child do not eat that chocolate chip cookie in the cookie jar, and he does it, and it's no accident. He meant to do it. He was being sneaky and all that sort of stuff. You gonna all right? You're not my son anymore. It's it's just no understanding of the love of God at all. Really. Once we are the child of God, we are the child of God forever. We have God in us. The Spirit of God dwells in us and we in God. There's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. And so this idea, well, if you do it on purpose, well, I didn't mean to do it. That's it's stupid. It's just as stupid as stupid gets. And so the point that Paul's making, or in Hebrews 10, what it's the point is one that it's wrong to sin. It's never okay to sin. And the idea that you can sin and then offer a sacrifice for that sin, it, it it's not possible. You can't do it because Jesus already paid for that sin. And now if you're going out and doing it, you're you're making his sacrifice a shame. And so don't sin. It's wrong to sin. It's always wrong to sin. It's never okay to sin. Ever. If you want to argue that you, we shouldn't be sinning, you're right. I'm with you all the way. But to, then to take that and to say, well, if you sin, you lose your salvation. That's where I got a big problem. All right.
Jesus paid it all, but if you practice sin on purpose till death, then there is one unforgivable sin. The unforgivable sin, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, is not believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is not fully explained, and the Bible says you won't be forgiven if you don't forgive. If, if you don't forgive, and it says if you don't confess Jesus in front of men, he won't confess you in front of his father. So what if you're mute and you got no tongue and you can't speak, then you, there's no, you're rejected of God. You can't be saved because you can't speak the words, I believe in Jesus. Is that what you're teaching? You know, these people, they don't, I don't know if you guys put any thought into what you're preaching and teaching at all. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong to confess Jesus before men but it stems from what's in your heart if you read the Bible you should understand that so I am saying error on the side of caution <laughs> no you're not you're putting demands that are impossible on others and you won't put it on yourself so I'm saying error on the side of caution not sure what that has to do with works or the law because you don't have any idea what you're saying. But we've said enough. There are lost souls, and many did, and I must share. Or, I'm sorry. There are lost souls, and many people who have walked away from the Lord like I did. And so you were saved, and then you became unsaved, and now you're saved again, but you're preaching... Hebrews 10 it says there remains no more sacrifice for sins so Jesus covered your sin once and then you walked away so no now no longer Jesus covered your sin you're you're lost so who paid for your sin the second time there remains no more sacrifice for sin that's what you're teaching Carter that you can lose your salvation that's what you're telling people. Oh, I lost my salvation. Now I'm back. Who are you fooling, man? I'm not here to argue, even though that's all you do is argue, condemn people, and tell them, oh, Jesus didn't do enough to save anybody. Look at me. I walked away from God, lost my salvation. Now I'm back. Telling people that, well, if you sin, you're going to lose your salvation just like I did. That's exactly what you're teaching, Carter. Alright, this guy. Read. Look at this guy. Come on, buddy. Young fella. Doesn't understand nothing. Trying to tell me what Jesus did was not enough to save anybody. I don't save myself. What video are you watching? Yo, this is what you're teaching, buddy say if you sin you lose your salvation therefore there's no other possible way to, to look at it if you are saving yourself I mean you're not even being honest with yourself buddy this is the mindset of people who like their sin this is the mindset of people who like their sin. This is why you speak what you don't know and waste your time while souls perish arguing doctrine. Which is exactly what you're doing. Arguing doctrine. My video, my experience are for people who have turned away, who were saved, and then were unsaved, and then become saved again, which is not in the Bible anywhere at all. And therefore, you're a liar and a deceiver or are li living deceived which the Bible talks about Talk talking about people like you so please stop responding putting words in my mouth about laws and works Jesus paid it all but you have no fear of God and it shows oh yeah no I, I don't have any fear of you and Carter you're not God that should show I don't fear you at all you're not God be humble like Dave yeah, you're telling people that you are perfect and you never sin and that you're saving yourself 
and that if others, if they sin, they're going to lose their salvation just like you did. That's what you say. You walked away from God. You were saved and then became unsaved, and now you're saved again because now you're perfect. Now, what you're saying is that Jesus didn't save you. And Jesus can't keep people saved, is what you're saying. That Jesus died in vain, that you have to save yourself. And you arrogantly claim that you are perfect and have saved yourself, and now you're going around telling people, be humble. You're a young fella, and you don't know squat. So my recommendation is to wipe the snot off your nose and read the Bible and do your best to understand what it's talking about. And without faith, man, what do you got? If you don't have faith, how are you going to understand the Word of God? You're telling me, be humble. None of the disciples of Jesus, uh, none of the disciples or Jesus would preach this mess. Okay, Jesus says, "For God so loved the world that He." gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life once saved always saved that's the gospel jesus preached it and you're a liar and i really just come out and say what well, what must i do to be saved what's the answer to that they preached conviction and died for it they preached what well, be convicted i'm convicted you're convicted. Uh, yeah. Satanists are convicted. Politicians are convicted. Well, no, they're not. I take that last one back. Yeah. Being, con being convicted, man, that's not going to save you, buddy. You preach to relax. Yeah, just relax. Well, <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, first of all, at the sun. Free. If the Jesus says, "If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free, indeed." Now, is Jesus lying or is Carter lying? In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let your heart let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. If you think you could screw up and lose your salvation, buddy, how can you have peace in your heart? It's not possible. The only way to have peace in your heart is to believe that once you are saved, you are saved, sealed, and sanctified forever. There's no other way, bud. No other way. Yeah, no, I am saying relax. Be at peace. Don't worry. You are saved, sealed, and secure forever. Trust the Spirit of God that is in you to lead you away from all sin and all trouble. Even though you're going to have these things in life. This is part of what's going on in, in our flesh. But it, it's only temporary. And obviously the reason why it's wrong to sin is because of all the heartache that it brings, all the trouble that it brings. It, it, its end is death. And it's obviously always the better path to take the Spirit of God rather than the wickedness of the world, right? Uh, so, I mean, come on, man. God wants us to have peace and to put our rest in the Lord Jesus Christ. You have no love on your of your neighbor. No. You're going around teaching people that Jesus didn't do enough to save them. And then you're claiming, I don't have any love. That's brilliant. Man. That's just brilliant. You couldn't help anyone find Jesus speaking as you do. I can't.
can't help nobody. Oh, you think I can save anybody? I can't save myself. You're right, I can't do it. I can't help nobody. Jesus says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth me, and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. So it's all Jesus. I can't do it. Jesus can, but I can't. I can't save anybody. Jesus can, though. Zero law. I have zero. See? See what I mean? I have zero law. You lack fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm putting all my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I did a Jehovah's Witness video. I got the same response from people who lack the Holy Spirit. Really? Huh. I got the same exact... Uh, they said everything that I'm saying. Is that true? The people that do not believe... Real quick, wait. Let's, uh, let's, go. let's go to John. Let's go to John. Oh, oh I can't. Let's go to John 1.1. 1, 1. Let's go here. Uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. Or, I'm sorry, in the Word was with God and the Word was God. All right, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. No, the Word is God. Jesus is God. Now let's go to the Jehovah's Witness. Oh, maybe that's not in here. I apologize. Um, I thought it was in here. All right, so the Jehovah's Witness Bible says, and the Word was a God. All right, I apologize. I'll have to, let's, I guess I'll have to do it this way, because you guys might think I'm lying. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Oops, come on. And the Word was a uh, God. This is uh, Jehovah's Witness right there. The Bible. And the Word was a uh, God. Oh, you're going to shift the argument lay the, and try to connect me with something else rather than what the Word of God says. Uh, this is a tactic that deceivers use very often. And so I got the response from people that, who lack the Spirit, Holy Spirit who feel they will ignore the message and pick and choose scripture to fight because it's pride. You're pride, you're full of pride if you don't listen and do what I say. You gotta humble yourself and realize I'm God. Don't you know forget the Bible, just listen to me, right? Anyways, bro, I'm not your brother. You talk as though you are my enemy. This has been eye opening. Jesus fought the religious too. Yes, he did. I'm going to rest. First, you go up here and tell you we tell people to relax, and then now you say, I'm going to go relax. I'm going to rest knowing what I know. Is that not hypocrisy? That's a classic case of hypocrisy right there. Again, I'm going to go back to Matthew 23. I mean, Jesus is laying it down. He is giving it to these guys. Look at this. Have you ever read Matthew 23? Maybe I need to learn the spell first. Okay. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, 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 hypocrites. Hypocrit hypocrisy hypocrites he's hammering these guys because they don't understand nothing these guys are experts in the Bible they are these guys spend night and day reading the Bible 
the Old Testament, and they don't understand nothing. And I like to point, you know, this verse 13 here, for you set up the kingdom of heaven against men, you're saying that faith is not enough. You're saying that uh, Jesus did not do enough to save anybody. That you've got to stop sinning. You've got to stop doing this. You've got to stop doing that. You've got to start giving me money and start listening to me. Humble yourself. But you don't live up to the standard that you're putting on others. Because you yourself sin. You sin today. You sin yesterday. You're going to sin tomorrow. So you're not living up to the standard that you're putting on other people. Neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. So you're lashing out against the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is, whosoever believes in Jesus shall not perish, but has everlasting life. Once saved, always saved, is the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is no other gospel and without it, it's impossible to have peace. Alright. Let's, let's talk about it. Bring it on. Let's go. Let's go.